Alright. Nice. Oh yeah. Vortex rings. They're swirling masses of fluid. Smoke rings, bubble rings, sometimes made by dolphins, sometimes tied in knots. We'll get to those later. But sometimes they're made by crazy YouTubers. Hey, I'm Diana and you're watching Physics Girl. I want to make a vortex ring in the pool. So my most popular video ever is of a half ring vortex we made in the pool. So I recently wondered, could we make a full vortex ring? I know it can be done because we've already done it. But even before we tried it, I thought it could be done. Because we'd already made a half ring vortex in the pool, remember, with a plate. You couldn't see the vortex at first, but you could see the shadows made by the surface of the water where the vortex met the air and caused the water to dip down. We won't be able to use that effect to help us see the ring if it's fully submerged underwater, but we could try the food coloring thing, which we did with the first half ring vortex by dropping food coloring into the ends and watching it travel down to illuminate a full half ring. But for the full ring, hmm, there are no ends. So we're gonna have to try to get the food coloring in there before it forms, or as it's forming. I have an idea. I had an idea. So I'm gonna show you what we did. And then I'm gonna talk about these vortices in real research, like knotted vortices tied in knots. But first, here's what we did in the pool. <gasps> it's really cold. <laughs> and Derek, who's being so kind and lending me his pool and also helping me, thanks for your pool. No problem. We have a vortex cannon, which is usually used for um, air vortices and for shooting people, <clears throat> but we're using it in the water. And my idea is that I'm gonna squeeze some of the food coloring just on the outside in the front, right where the vortex is coming out, and hopefully it'll get sucked in and make a full ring vortex. More food coloring? More, more food coloring. Okay, try that. Ooh! Oh, I hit, I shot too far upwards. No. What is happening? I don't know. All right. We're gonna That's go. The one. That's the one. I feel like I see like yes. an air bubble in there. Yes! Is there an air bubble in the ring that <laughs> I just don't get? Oh, it is so cold in here. Success! Hey! <laughs> so, yeah. It worked. That was a lot of fun. Now, how could we make vortex rings even cooler? A vortex ring is just a vortex, like any other swirling mass of fluid. Tornadoes, water spouts, dust devils, whirlpools. But with a vortex ring, you take the vortex line, which is the actual scientific term for the line that all of the fluid swirls about, and you wrap it in a circle. But you could wrap it in all different crazy shapes. The only necessary condition is that the vortex line cannot end in a fluid, end in any medium. So obviously our half ring vortex line ended, but it ended at the surface between the water and the air. You wouldn't be able to make that half ring fully underwater. It would either close or it would just dissipate, break up. But interestingly, vortex lines can end in fluids when they're forming or dissipating. For example, a vortex line created by an airplane engine can sometimes bend and stretch until it reaches the ground where physics will then allow it to end and stay there. And you get weird looking phenomena like this. So, as long as the vortex line doesn't end in the fluid, you can make really crazy shapes with the vortex. And for a long time, scientists wondered how to make vortices tied in knots, which was hypothetically possible, but practically a big challenge. Until William Irvine and his team came along. I just have to ask, are all the bottles on the shelf back there because you've had so many celebrations? That's successful uh, graduations. That's great. Were scientists for a while trying to make knotted vortices? So the history goes back a long ways, actually. It goes back all the way to Lord Kelvin. Lord Kelvin was, in fact, I think, basically responsible for introducing the idea of topology in physics and knots in physics. So there's some Was accounts there? of, uh, of Lord Kelvin himself trying by colliding smoke rings, basically. All the naive approaches seem to fail. And by naive approaches, I mean sort of smashing vortices into each other, hoping they will not up. But the solution that we found would have been very, very hard to do in practice before mm -hmm. recent times. 3D printing allows you to have a sort of rapid turnaround time 
and prototype yeah. and go from idea to experiment in, in a day, basically. So we ended up piggybacking on a known fluid dynamics effect, which is called a starting vortex. Airplanes have these trailing vortices behind them. That's a sort of very, very well-known effect. But what's less well-known is that the moment in which the airplane accelerates, it actually emits a vortex that gets left behind. And that mm -hmm. vortex actually connects up with the trailing vortices and closes mm -hmm. uh, on the wings. Uh, our idea was that we could use that effect in order to engineer vorticity in the lab, essentially by 3D printing wings, making them of the shape that we wanted. So we made a vortex knot, we made linked rings. Here's an example of the mm -hmm. wing that makes the linked rings. Accelerating them impulsively, hoping that then they would leave behind the vortex of the shape of the wing. That's really cool. I think you should definitely try the vortices in the pool. I don't have a pool either. I had to borrow one. So next time you are at a pool, give the vortex rings a try. Thanks so much for watching this one though. And costume change. In my last video, I promised you guys something. I showed you this phenomenon where if you sing a particular note into a tube, you can't sing the note. <laughs> I asked you guys to try this for yourselves and to send me your best dying animal noises and you did not disappoint. What we can't sing is F sharp. That's where our gap is. No, I want to actually try my hardest to sing that note. That's so weird. What participation. I love you guys. I know I don't tell you often enough. By the way, right now I'm gonna tease another PBS show. So if you hate monsters, then you can go watch my video on square vortex rings. It's the least monstery video I have. But if you like monsters, PBS Digital Studios, which is the network that I am part of, has a new show called Monstrum, all about monsters and the lore behind monsters. And now this mention of monsters makes a little more sense in my video. I'll put a link to Monstrum in the description or at the end screen during the credits, which I'm gonna cut to right now and you should stay for because there's gonna be a physics joke. Thanks for staying all the way to the, here we go. Here's the credits.